recording in a few moments. Okay, excellent. So let's go to our PowerPoint. Very good. Okay, welcome to lecture number one. Today is the beginning of our course, Essential Medical Bioscience. Today we will have a very interesting topics. And I want just to let you know that the topics, whatever I'm talking about, cells, molecules, atoms, are going to be related or what you're going or what you're going to use please those backgrounds please please those backgrounds who is doing noise please all right so noises can be affecting my focusing please okay so please try to uh, not do this paper and a scratch or plastic please thank you thank you okay miss nance right Okay. All right, so let's get started. If you want to talk, yes, uh, you can unmute yourself. All right, so we have uh, Essential Medical Bioscience, lecture number one. Okay, so let's get started. So they said, not scolae sed vitae decimus. I'm pretending to talk uh, fluent Latin. No, I'm not. Actually, we know a lot of Latin words, but definitely what does it mean is this guy who was basically in, um, uh, in the first century is a, a Greek philosopher, Seneca, or Seneca, that is said this. What does that mean? One should not gain knowledge and skills to please a teacher. So, but because of the benefits you will gain in your life. So for now on, one of the first thing I always uh, tell the students that everything you're going to apply or to study here or learn in class, the best way to learn and to uh, grasp the information and last for a long time is to apply in your surroundings. Apply your knowledge in your home. This is, you finish bioscience, you always have something to apply in your uh, surrounding life. Okay? So that is important. All right. So at least you need to study three hours a day for bioscience. Okay? In order to be successful in your exams. All right, so here we have the um, the map ma uh, mind mapping, the mind map that is going to we are going to talk about math, physics in life, bioscience. What is bioscience? The health and its six dimensions: disease prevention. And the first thing is the introduction to body systems. Whatever is in yellow is what I'm going to talk right now. Whatever is in white is what is coming later. So let's talk about the introduction of body systems. Talking about introduction of body systems, we are going to talk about the organization of the human body. Organization of the human body. So we are going to organize from the smallest structures to the largest structures. Okay? From the smallest to the largest structure. And you see here, this guy means that could be in the very soon. You will see that open eyes, open ears. Okay? All right, so the organization are going to be a start from atom. Atom is the minimum unit of matter in, uh, uh, in nature. They are going to, a group of atoms are going to form what we call a molecule. This molecule are going to form organelles. What is an organelle? Organelle is everything that is inside the cell. All the elements, the nucleus, including the mitochondria, the enzymes, Everything that is inside the cell is called organelle. So who is, what is being made the organelle? Through molecules. So molecules coming together are going to form the organelles, the centrioles, the lysosome, back wall, mitochondria, etc. So all these together are going to form what we call a cell. This cell. Cell organelles together are forming a cell. A group of cells are going to form a tissue. Tissue, the other way to call tissue is parenchyma. Parenchyma. Just to let you know, because this is something I, we use a lot, parenchyma in the future. Parenchyma means tissue, okay? Parenchyma means tissue. So, but here we have atom, jump, association of atoms, molecules. A group of molecules can form organelles. A group of organelles can form cells. Cells, a group of cells, form a tissue. 
a tissue are going to form an organ, okay? For example, we have the uh, GI system, the gastrointestinal system. Gastrointestinal system is formed by different tissues. We have the lining that is uh, epithelium of the, the lining means the inner, uh, the, the surface, the inner surface of the stomach, esophagus. You touch that with your finger, that is a tissue, that is epithelial tissue. Then the, that is one type of tissue. Then we have in the stomach, the, the wall of the stomach is composed by muscle, by muscle, by muscle, that is muscular tissue. And the outer is going to be connective tissue, so three layers. So the stomach is composed by three different tissues. So tissues together are going to form an organ. What I just said is an example of. So then after the organ, they are going to form the system. The system. A group of organs are going to form a system. For example, we have the gastrointestinal system. Gastrointestinal system is a group of organs. What group of organs? Esophagus, a stomach, a small intestine, large intestine. So those are different organs. The duodenum and the stomach is not the esophagus. The esophagus is not the stomach. So each of these is an organ. So each organ, a group of organs are going to create a system. For example, the urinary system. The urinary system is a group of organs which system uh, uh, is going to be composed by the kidneys, by the ureters, by, composed by the urinary bladder and the urethra. All of these are different shape, different structures, different organs. So a group of organs together are for the same function are going to be a system. You okay with that? And the group of systems, how many systems we have in our body? We have the lymphatic, epithelial, gastrointestinal, nervous tissue, muscular, all, uh, 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 skeletal. We have 11 systems. So remember that. How many systems we have? 11. 11 systems. Okay? All right. So it's very simple, right? So molecules, organelles, bigger than that, cells, bigger than that, tissue, tissue are going to form organs, organs going to form systems. And the systems, the 11 systems together are going to form what is your body, your organism. Is okay? You okay with that? Hello? Any question? No questions. No. Yes. For communication, please, I will appreciate just to tell me, mm, yes, mm, no, yeah, okay, good, whatever, right? So. But tell me, because I don't want to feel like I'm a machine, right? You cannot turn me on and off. So, yes, it's a part of the communication. So that's why it, what is difficult to teach in, in online. So your participation, uh, I very say very kindly, please uh, participate. Okay? All right, so let's, go, let's talk about organ system. We have main organ system, we have 11 body systems. This is important to remember, 11 body systems. 11, how many systems we have? Everybody, please. 11. 11. 11. Excellent. The integumentary system, the integumentary system, this is important. In all of these are important. Integumentary is basically the skin. The skin, where you are, the skin your hair, your nails, and the exocrine glands. For example, we have the sweat glands. Sweat glands, okay? That is called the integumentary system. And why is, I remark about this, why? Because uh, when you are going to do your physical exam, or uh, when you are, uh, when you are, it's the time to do it, you're going, the first thing you're going to do is the observation an inspection of the integumentary system. Integumentum. You can say integumentum. Integumentum. Integumentum or integumentary system. That is the, the inspection uh, assessment of the skin, the hair, the nails, and the sweat glands. So 
that is important because the skin can be dry, can be some ulcers, can some be lesions. That is part of your nursing assessment. Your hair, your hair, for example, the patient is bald or pieces of area who are bald areas, or that can tell you following, following, uh, following a hair or losing of the hair bit by bit are going to be suspicious of some hormonal dysfunction like hypothyroidism. Nails, the nails, they can have fungus, they can have different shapes. Talking, knowing the shape of the nail, you can tell if this patient have cardiovascular problems in the past or respiratory problems in the past. So I'm just making those remarks because I don't want you to ask, uh, to, to exactly tell, uh, ask you what I'm saying, but what the concept I want you to know is the integumentary system is everything that is covering your body. Everything that is covering your body. Your skin, your nails, your hair, even the mucus of the mouth, the inner lining of the, the lining of the mouth and the genital areas, that is going to be called integumentary system. You okay with that? So what is, what is coming to your mind when I say integumentary system? Skin and the rest. You okay with that? Okay. So what is the function of the integumentary system? Integumentary system cover the body and regular body temperature. So in next classes, we are going to talk how the skin are going to regulate the temperature. How it's going to regulate the temperature. Why is you become red when you are hot, when it's actually hot, uh, 120 Fahrenheit, 110 Fahrenheit, etc. So why is that happening? How the skin is going to control your, uh, your temperature, right? So... Uh, Basically, what I, in addition to that, a skin, I will tell you ahead of time, is the first line of defense against infections. The first line of defense of infection is going to be skin. Because it's like a barrier, it's like a suit. It's like a, have an astronaut suit that is going to protect you from the external factors, right? So that is what happened with the skin. So when you have a disruption of the skin, an opening of the skin, that could be an entry of bacteria into your body. So it's very important to know about the integumentary system. Okay? So just to give you some example, a patient who are laying down in a bed for a long period of time, they are going to create what we call bed ulcers. Bed ulcers. Do you see some bed ulcers in the past? Probably yes, correct? And this is something that you need to examine. So it's not enough to see from the front of the patient. You need to turn the patient to the left, turn the patient to the right to see what are the area of pressures of the, of the body against the bed. And those areas can be a source of a, a, an ulcer. So be careful with that. So what you need to have in your mind, integumentary system, is the skin and other work of Faneras, we call Faneras, I don't, I'm not going to go on that, but the, the skin, the nails, the hair, all that surface covering the body, that is integumentary system. A skeletal system are going to be bones, joints, and ligaments, okay? A skeletal system. A skeletal system is going to give you the, can you imagine you, you without bones? We will be like amoebas, right? So we have two eyes, trying to crawl somewhere. So the skeleton or the skeletal system are going to be formed by 206 bones and that is going to give you the frame, the frame. And the, they're going to give you the locomotion, locomotion, how you're going to walk, how you're going to run because of the bones, right? Lower, uh, lower extremities. And they are going to basically have um, uh, uh, the, uh, I mean, motility, the activity, locomotion, they are going to be the frame. Protection, I'm going to write that. Protection. Protection. The cranium, what is inside? The brain. That, is, that bone is going to protect the brain. The thorax, the rib cage, are going to protect the heart and the, and the lungs. The, the hip are going to protect the internal organs of the uh, pelvis, right? Protection. They are going to be a frame, a frame for your body. 
locomotion, locomotion, locomotion. They are going to be a locomotion, what else? Uh, store inorganic salts because they store calcium. Tell me why the bones are white. What do you think if the bones are white? So there's bones that are black or purple or green or red. No, I think I'm, because of the calcium color is white. Who said that? Who said that? Calcium. The color of the yeah. calcium is no, white. Who? who said that? Your name? No. No. Excellent. Very good. Calcium. Just remember the milk. Milk is white. Yes. Why? Because they have a lot of calcium. So calcium is the one. And very good. Is giving the color of the uh, uh, and the bones. They have a lot of calcium. And calcium is not just for bones. We will talk about another time. And they are going to be source of calcium that is called the store of inorganic salts. Just remember mineral. It's a mineral. Calcium is a mineral. And the other one, the bones are the place where they are going to form the red blood cells. Red blood cells, they are going to form white cells and they are going to form platelets. So the bones are one of, remember this, containing blood forming tissues. What are the blood forming tissues? The red blood cells, the white cells, and the platelets. Okay? So the bones are not just for, for as a frame or support, and not only for locomotion. It's not like a storage of calcium. It's much more than that. So bones, listen to this, is the most, the, one of the most dynamic systems in the body. So, for example, you have a bone. Sorry, you have a broken bone. You have a broken bone. If you have a broken bone. The bones are going to overlap, like this. If you don't resolve the problem in the next twenty-four hours, that bone is already fused in that position. Fused. So you cannot move it because the bone is already formed around that that area. Twenty-four hours, and it's very. It's one of the a skeletal system is one of the most dynamic, dynamic uh, systems in the body. For example, if you have a wound in your in your in your in your arm, that wound is going to take to heal completely in two three days. Two three days, so even faster than the skin because the bone starts to resolve in the next twenty four hours. Okay, so when you have a broken bone, you need to. Uh, fix that in the next 24 hours. Otherwise, they're going to be fused in that position. What they need to do to break the bone again and put it back in place. Okay? All right? Yeah. Uh, muscular system. Muscular system, we have about 600, 600 muscles all, all over. So the muscular system, we have dif different types of muscles. We have the skeletal muscle. We, are, we have a plenty class about that. A smooth muscle, cardiac muscle. So what is a skeletal muscle? I'm going to give you one name that you're familiar with. Biceps. Biceps, for example. Quadriceps, dorsalis, whatever. All the muscle, all muscles that you can move, if you want, that is a skeletal muscle. So that is a voluntary muscle. Voluntary muscle. So all the muscles that you can move are going to be called voluntary or skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle. The smooth muscle are basically located in the internal organs. For example, when you have peristalsis, means the movement of your stomach. You, you know, the stomach is moving. When you're eating, the stomach is contracting and relaxing. Not like a heart, but they're going to contract and relax. Why? Because doing this, they're going to mix the gastric juices in, with the food in order to have a better digestion, for example, right? But how this actually stomach are going to contract and relax? Because they have a smooth muscle. This smooth muscle is an involuntary muscle. Involuntary muscle. It's an involuntary muscle. So, Anything that you can, uh, you is moving uh, automatically without you able to stop or to continue are going to be called a smooth muscle. 
Example of smooth muscle, we have the urinary blood. Urinary blood. Another example, the stomach. Another example, the small intestine. Another example, large intestine. Another example, the gut blood, etc. We have the, the walls of the arteries and veins are composed by a smooth muscle. Okay? Can you move your gut bladder? You have a gut bladder, right? Can you move your gut bladder like a bell, like this? You cannot, right? Right? So that is a smooth muscle, involuntary muscle. A skeletal muscle is the voluntary muscle, the smooth muscle, the involuntary. The cardiac muscle is going to be a special muscle because they have autonom autonomic uh, contraction. So basically they have, um, they can uh, work independent to the nervous system. And basically what happened is you have a node, an area that produces the contractions of the heart. So cardiac muscle is again an involuntary muscle as well. Involuntary muscle. So the characteristics of the cells, because they have similarity, some similarities and some differences, is not the scope of that class right now. So cardiac muscle is an involuntary muscle as well. How many types of muscles we have? Everybody, please. How many types of muscles? Six hundred three. 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 Three group of muscles. Oh, three groups. Skeletal, voluntary, smooth, involuntary, and the cardiac muscle cardiac is muscle involuntary. Can you stop your heart? No. No. Right? No. no. right? So, actually, it's involuntary. Okay? All right. We have the nervous system. Nervous system, we have central and peripheral nervous system. Why is called central and why is called peripheral nervous system? Somebody can tell me. Uh, the location. Beautiful. Oh, Excellent. The central nervous system, central is in the center nervous system. The brain, the spinal cord, the spinal cord, all is in the center of the body. So that is called central nervous system. And you see these yellow uh, branches coming out? Those are the peripheral nervous system. So whatever is coming out from the central out to the internal organs or other parts away from the center, that is peripheral nervous system. So the nervous system is divided into the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. What it's going to do is the, uh, transmit information. So this is not a scope yet. I'm just doing general things because we have a special class for nervous system. All right, so they're going to transmit information, basically. Transmit and process information. Okay. Endocrine function. The endocrine function is, uh, endocrine uh, means uh, inside, right? So these endocrine functions are going to talk about many glands. We are going to talk about the thyroid gland, the Parathyroid gland, talking about the uh, the, the uh, adrenal cord, adrenal gland, for example, the pituitary gland, all that are gland. So the glands, listen to this, please. Glands are divided into exocrine glands, and the other one is the endocrine glands. Example of endocrine glands, thyroid gland. Best example, thyroid gland. Example of exocrine glands, the sweat glands. How, the, how, how we can differentiate that? Very simple. The exo means outside. If this is the gland here, the gland in the exocrine are going to have a duct here, like a, a duct. If you have here the skin, this is the sweat gland. The sweat gland are going to secrete uh, sweat and they are going to drain into the skin through a duct. A duct. That is important. The endocrine do not have a duct. The endocrine, the thyroid gland is going to be like this. They are going to basically absorb directly to the bloodstream without ducts, without the presence of ducts. So the endocrine system is a very important 
a topic that we will talk about in lecture, I guess, 13 or 14. All right, <clears throat> so now, here we have the, uh, a very important term, question for exam, the homeostasis, homeostasis. Listen to this, please, homeostasis, homeostasis. This homeostasis is how the body keep the internal balance. And what is homeostasis? Homeostasis is going to comprise or is going to involve the nervous system plus, I said plus, the endocrine system. That is the homeostasis, is the system that you keep the internal balance. What does it mean? That means, for example, you have certain amount of water in your body, you want to keep the same amount of water in your body. How is that? So if you are dehydrated, you are losing water, you need water. So who knows that? The one who knows that is the nervous system. The nervous system, they said, your body is dehydrated. The nervous system is telling you your body is dehydrated. So then, if your body is dehydrated, the nervous system is going to send orders to some glands to retain water. So, for example, we have the antidiuretic hormone, the ADH. The antidiuretic hormone is, sec is secreted when you are dehydrated. So, it's the nervous system who is sending orders to the endocrine system to make a change, to keep, to trying to keep the internal balance. So, what is doing this hormone? Instead to pee as much as before, you're going to pee less because you are dehydrated. So the nervous system understand that and said, okay, be careful. We need to save all the water we can. So you need to pee less. So the nervous system send an order to, the, to a gland. This gland send another hormone and the hormone is going to reabsorb more water, making the urine less boiling. So that is how you're going to keep your internal balance. And remember two things, one thing. This is the nervous system, this is the endocrine system. When I said homeostasis, basically in the, uh, we talk about the relationship between the central nervous system or the nervous system with the endocrine system. Is that clear or no, please? It's clear. It's clear. It's clear. Yes, it's clear. Excellent. All right, beautiful. Cardiovascular system, please. Critical thinking start with reading carefully the, the words. Critical thinking, we will talk about that another time. Cardiovascular, so what do you have in your mind? The heart. No, it's not just the heart only. It's a cardiovascular system. It's including the arteries and veins. Cardiovascular, vascular, is arteries and veins. Composed by the heart and blood vessels. So what is doing the cardiovascular? are going to distribute oxygen and the nutrients all over the body. And they can trans transport everything. You eat, for example, uh, a candy or a piece of bread. They are going to be absorbed. They go to the bloodstream, arteries and veins. Cardiovascular is the heart and the arteries and veins. The lymphatic system, everybody forget about the poor lymphatic system, but it's very important. Why? because that is going to uh, sorry that is going to be part of the immune system immune system the lymphatic system you want the proof of that i will give you a proof of that if we, when you have some infection a viral infection some cold or some infection in some part of your body for example you have a cold don't you feel that you have some like small balls here on the on the neck do you notice that when you get sick yes. in the past, right? So that is the lymphatic nodes. And that is they're getting bigger because they are fighting against the micro. They are fighting against the virus or bacteria. So the lymphatic system is going to basically very important uh, for different reasons. Number one, immune system. Immune system. 
participate in the immune system. How? Trans making the transportation of the white cells. It's too early to talk about T helpers and uh, um, 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 T killers. So just remember that. Lymphatic system is like, if you have arteries, imagine this. You have arteries, this is like Highway 101. You have the veins, the veins is like uh, uh, Highway 280. And what is the lymphatic system? The lymphatic system is like El Camino Real. So there's some vessels too. This Camino Real, the lymphatic system, are going to produce, are going to transport uh, immune cells, the white cells. Okay? So and this lymphatic system, please do not carry blood. No blood inside this lymphatic system. What they are going to carry is the lymphatic fluid. Lymphatic fluid. fluid. This lymphatic fluid basically are going to be composed by protein, fat. I'm not going to go on that. But lymphatic system composed by lymphatic vessels and lymphatic nodes. Lymphatic vessels and lymphatic nodes. Lymphatic nodes are actually being uh, concentrated in the tonsils, in the adenoids, in the spleen, etc. Okay? So what is the lymphatic system? Lymphatic system is a system who carry a lymphatic fluid. There is two main functions of the lymphatic, lymphatic system. Uh, three, main, three functions. I'm going to mention two now. Immune system is going to be the transportation of the white cells through this El Camino Real. And the other um, lymphatic system is to reabsorb excess of water. So what does, mean? what does it mean? That water can accumulate in the tissues, in the organs, or in the legs, on the legs. So any excess of fluid or overload of fluid in your body, the lymphatic system is going to drain it out. So they are going to drain out. So they are going to prevent the accumulation of fluid between or inside organs. Respiratory system. Respiratory system, we will see, uh, is the main function is the gas exchange. Gas exchange. Just remember that. Gas exchange. What is the main function of the respiratory system? Gas exchange. So that means oxygen in, carbon dioxide out. So when you breathe in, is actually a oxygen, right? And when you breathe out, you are eliminating carbon dioxide. So this exchange in oxygen out carbon dioxide, that is the main function of the respiratory system, is the um, gas exchange, it's called gas exchange. Digestive system composed by organs of the gastrointestinal tract. All right, so listen to this. Gastrointestinal tract is different to say digestive system. System, what is system? a group of organs, okay? GI tract is the tubing, all the tube, the esophagus, the stomach, the large, small intestine. Function of the digestive system is mechanically, uh, mechanically and chemically break down food. Digestive system, write down this. Digestion means breakdown, breakdown, breakdown. If you take a piece of chicken, that piece of chicken is not running in your blood. How is going to get the proteins from the chicken that you ate and into the bloodstream? Through digestion. They are going to break it down in a small, a small, a small, a small, until they are able to pass through the cell. So the ST system, mechanical and chemically breakdown. Why mechanically? Because of the movement of the stomach, the intestines, right? and chemically the gastric acid and the enzymes that are in the GI tract. All right. Here we have the urinary system and the urinary system, I want you to remember a few things here. Filtration. Filtration is one of the functions of the, of the, uh, of the kidneys. Uh, we have 
Remember this, filtration, I'm going to give you again. Filtration, reabsorption, excretion, secretion, and so hormones. They are going to release renin, they are going to release erythropoietin, and they are going to activate vitamin D. This is coming later, okay? So function is going to be basically filtration. How to remember that? Look at this. F, filtration. R, reabsorption. E, excretion. S, secretion. H, H, organs. So with that mnemonic, you can tell what are all the functions of the kidney. There is no more. There is all the functions of the kidney is in there. Filtration, reabsorption, excretion, secretion, and organs. I'm not going to explain about in detail what is the renin, erythropoietin, the activation of vitamin D, or what is the difference between secretion and excretion. Just remember for this moment, filtration is the minimum that you need to remember. But you can tell that there is more than one, fresh. Filtration, reabsorption, excretion, secretion of hormones. What I'm going to ask, if I ask something, what is the main function of, one of the functions of the urinary system is the filtration and clear up of the waste product. One, the main organ for elimination of toxins or, or some substances are the kidneys. The kidneys are the most important organ for elimination of many drugs. You okay with that? And it's the main organ who maintain the fluid uh, volume in your body. So a water regulator, water regulator, right now, the, be, the most important water regulator are the kidneys. Reproductive system composed by internal and external genitalia, and the function is produce a viable offspring for the continuation of the species. So we have a very, very beautiful class that at the end. I want you to do your practice questions and you're going to do this at home in order to give you a chance to review all the material that we was talking today. Okay, any question? No. Everything is clear? Tell me, don't... Don't tell me, don't, don't tell me it's, it's clear when it's not. It's clear. Really what, was clear. The, what was the H of that acronym, FRESH? H, it will be hormones, two dots, means renin, renin, erythropoietin. So probably it's difficult to write that. You want, okay, I will give you. It's erythropoietin. with N at the end. The renin, oh my God, renin, and the activation of vitamin D. I'm not going to ask that in the, in the class, but you're asking me, I'm answering. Okay? Okay, so I want to tell you one more thing here. Uh, please, you can ask me any questions you want, whatever questions. All questions are very welcome. I said all questions. There is no bad questions from you at all. So everything can be redirected in the way. So I don't care how much to show you how much I know. I don't care about that. But I care how much you can learn. You can ask me any questions, whatever level you want. I will answer. I don't care. If I don't know, I will tell you, I don't know. I'm not afraid to say, I don't know, okay? So just let me know. If you have any question or anything that is coming to your mind to uh, clarify things, just let me know. Right now, we let's go to our lunch break, and I will see you at 12.30. We okay with that? 12.31. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hello, Mr. G. Um, later on, I would like to practice with you how to log in and how to uh, check all the 
uh, all the quiz, all the class notes, and all the those that I would like to practice with you first. Practice with you mean uh, how I have to log in and how I have to, because I I have very poor um, online class um, technical technology. Okay, I, I I will arrange that. We will we will arrange that at the end. Okay, okay? at the class. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. All right, so okay. I will see you, everybody, 12.30. 12 12 okay, see you. See you.
Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. The camera's on, please. Mr. Aaron. Aaron. Mr. Aaron. Excellent. Okay, so let's let's get uh, started and let's continue. Uh, where is Miss uh, Nut? Miss Nut? She accidentally left um, during break. Okay, she's still in break. Okay, so I'm going to come back in five minutes there. Okay, so let's continue. Sorry, okay. All right, so let's talk about the second part. Uh, we are going to uh, talk about the introduction to body systems. Uh, basically, it's a continuation, but in this moment, we are going to talk about the anatomical position of the body. If you know this guy, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, right? Leonardo da Vinci was actually uh, living in the mid uh, in the 1400s. 1450s uh, of uh, uh, actually, and at that time, it was uh, drawing this this graphic. That's why it's going to call Leonardo da Vinci on the human body. This guy uh, represents uh, in honor of one architect that was Mr. Vitruvius, Vitruvius, that was an architect on the Rome Empire, in the Rome Empire, in the first century. He was a very uh, uh, famous builder at that time. So what is the relation? So Leonardo da Vinci in that time, in the 1400s, uh, knowing that uh, at that time, a religion was very, very strong, right? Uh, in many ways. Uh, I mean, in the way that it was interacting with science and science and religion was basically uh, contradictory in many ways, right, at that time. But now, uh, and at that time, they were thinking that human, you and I, we were perfect. Perfect. We were just perfect. Why? Because God made us perfect. In addition to that, at that time, we were thinking that the, uh, 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 our perfection was basically even we were the center of the whole universe the center of the whole universe, we were, uh, were human, okay? So, and for this perfection, they draw a man, tell me, that noise is, is too much, too high for you guys? Or oh, it's okay? No, it's not bad. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay? Yeah, tell me, there is some noise here because I have somebody outside blowing the street, I guess. Okay, so, this is, so at that time, they was thinking we were so, Perfect. It's the center of the universe. That when they draw a man like this, you can see that they can draw a perfect circle, circumference. We can draw a perfect square because of the proportions that we was created for, right? And since then, that is considered the actually the anatomical position. Since that time, huh? anatomical position. This anatomical position is universal. You're going to use this in different, uh, we example images in the books, book images. This orientation you're going to use for X-ray. The same orientation for CT scan. MRI. EET. Ultrasound. So all, everything is going to be related to anatomical position. Now, now you need to know what is anatomical position. Anatomical position is standing up with the palms in front, like this. 
That is the anatomical position. No like this, no like that. Open hands with palms in front. We okay with that? Yep. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. And this anatomical position are going to be used for all textbooks. All images that you see in any part are going to use the anatomical position. Now, if you see here, the left hand, the left side of this human is going to be corresponding to your right hand. And the right side of the of the human here of the draw is going to correspond to the left side, to your left hand. So anatomical position in all these images, all the sun X-ray, CT scan, PT, uh, MRI, or are going to be opposite. So that means this is my right hand. What I have in front is the left side of the patient. If this is my left hand, what I have in front are going to be the right side of the patient. So always opposite. You okay with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So now I want you to remember this because this is uh, actually important. Number one, when you are going to have your hand in anatomical position, which finger is number one? The finger that is number one is the thumb. Number two, the index. Number three, the middle. Number four, the, how you call the wedding ring, the annular. <laughs> and the, uh, and the pinky one is the fifth one. So one, two, three, four, five. That is the number of the fingers. What about the toes? The toes, the toes are going to be the opposite. On the toes, the toe number one is going to be the big toe. Then big toe in the center, right? One, two, three, four, five. You okay with that? How to remember that? To remember that, just remember, what are the big finger? The thumb. What is the big toe? The big toe. Big toe and big finger, the thumb, are going to be number one. But always in your anatomical position according to your hands. Okay with that? Yes. So now, for this, for example, where is located the liver? On the right or on the left? Mostly. Anatomically or in the picture? Anatomically, right or left? Right. Right. Where is the stomach? Upper left. 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 Where is the spleen? Here. Left. In the left. center. Right. What center? What center? What, what is this? This is spleen. The spleen is on the right or on the left of the patient? Left side. Left. In the left side of the patient. In the left side of the patient. The gut bladder is on the right side. Okay? All right, so just remember, this is my right hand. What is in front is the left. What is, this is my left hand. What is in front is the, is the right. right. Just play, play the opposite. Okay? Okay, so now. Let me see what else I have. Okay, so all right. Now let's do a cross-sectional cut. When you see a, an image in CT scan MRI and the rest, they're going to give a cross-sectional. So they're cutting the body in half, in the center, trans in horizontal plane. Horizontal, correct? So what you're going to see is always the orientation for anatomical position is like you are looking the patient from the feet towards the head in that direction. So you are going to describe the uh, image, the structures, if you were looking from the feet to the head of the patient. So that's why this is going to be the liver, the liver. The feet is towards your, 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 uh, yourself and the head is behind the screen. The patient is laying down in supine position. Supine position. What is supine position? Supine position is this. Oh, sorry. Like that. Laying down by the back. Exactly. Very good. 
And prone, what is prone? Prone is the opposite of supine Jana. position. There you are. Your, your, your belly down, correct? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so that is what you're going to do in the in the, in the in this anatomical uh, position. For that, I'm going to need to go over some draw here. It's what I call my, the cookie man. I call, I call the cookie man. Let's see how I draw this. All right, so this is a person here, the head. This is the arm. This is the, oh, the other leg, another leg here. Then you have another arm here. Okay, kind of. Okay, so this is the anatomical position. In the anatomical position, we have a line that is going to go through the center of the of the person. That is called the mid sagittal plane. Sagittal is the plane, but it's called mid sagittal plane. Why? Because it's exactly in the middle of the of the of the patient so that is going to divide question for exam open eyes open ears are going to divide the body into right and left or left and right whatever you want okay you okay with that now here we have another light here like this like this like this like this like this in anatomical position like this like this like this like this, and these lines are going to be called the para sagittal plane. Why is called para sagittal? Para means parallel, parallel to the mid sagittal plane. You okay with that? So all this is yep. para sagittal, para 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 para, and this is the mid sagittal. Then we have. Then we have another plane, and remember, these parasitals are going to divide two into the right and left. Then we have a transverse plane. Transverse plane. This is the transverse plane, or called axial sometimes. But in anatomy, we use transverse. Okay, transverse. These transverse are going to actually, uh, are going to cut the body into superior and inferior. Yes or no, right? And this transverse can be in many directions, many planes, uh, superior, inferior, superior, inferior, superior, inferior, superior, inferior, superior, inferior, superior, inferior. Then we have another cut, another plane that is the oblique. I'm just going to mention because it's not really uh, uh, actually used so common for us. Oblique is going to be like this. Any oblique line, any oblique line could be like this. Okay. Uh, that's what I call my cookie man. Look like, I don't know, my, my head probably. Okay, cookie man. All right. So oblique. So there is basically three places. Sagittal, sagittal, and uh, uh, transverse and oblique. There is another cut, another plane. If you're looking, you're going to a building, second, third floor, as you be, you see somebody uh, downstairs. You're going to see the head, and you're going to he see the nose here, right? So actually, I'm going to make it more because... Okay, this is the nose. So we are going to cut the, the person, the body, like this. So I'm standing up here in front of you, I'm cutting my, my, my body like this, like this. So I'm cutting the, my body into anterior and posterior. It's like you're standing up a bagel and cut the bagel. The bagel anterior and posterior. Are you okay with that? And this is the, called the coronal plane. Coronal plane, question for the exam. Or frontal plane, frontal. So that is going to cut into anterior and posterior. So we have superior, inferior, posterior, anterior, and right and left. So those are the planes that we are going to use in our bio and anatomy physiology. We okay? All right. So that is the summary.
of that. And here we have some terminology that we are looking, we need to look for. Uh, there is in the exam, I'm telling you ahead of time, there is a matching, matching questions. So you have so superior match with what is the meaning? So what is above, higher than? Inferior or infra, so let's, let's start. Superior, super, super, or supra are going to be above or higher than. All right, so we have supraventricular. So supraventricular, ventricles are the heart, the ventricles of the heart. Above the ventricles are going to be the atriums. These atriums are supraventricular because are above the ventricular, ventricular system. Okay, and another example. Inferior, below, lower than. So, inferior. The foot is located inferior to the knee. Right? So, inferior, below, below, or lower than. Anterior is in front. Posterior, behind. Simple, right? Ventral. This is getting a little bit more elaborate. Towards the belly, ventral. Ventral, towards the belly. Ventral towards the belly. Basically, that is a prone position, right? Prone position. It's a prone position. Like, what happened with my piece? Okay. Prone position. Okay? Uh, ventral towards the belly. Dorsal, dorsal is the back, right? So the opposite of ventral towards the back, right? Dorsal towards the back or opposite of ventral. Medial. Medial is towards the midline. Towards the midline. Towards the midline. Lateral is away from the midline. Away from the midline. Let's apply this now. So I want you to focus what is medial and what is lateral. All right. So this, uh, this uh, lower extremity are going to be the right or the left. What do you think? Right. Everybody? Everybody got it? Right? Yeah. Okay. So now look at your foot. The, your, uh, look at your leg, right? The right leg. We have two bones here. Two bones. One bone is the tibia bone. The tibia. Please, some noises, please. Please, please, please. Tibia. And we have the fibula. Please, some noises, please. Okay. It's uh, Marilyn. You're doing some, some movements there. Yeah. No, no, no. Don't be scared. That's fine. I'm just telling. I'm not saying anything bad. <laughs> okay. All right, so for this, this is the right lower extremity. And tell me, the tibia is medial or lateral? Medial. 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 Excellent. And the fibula? Lateral. 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 Can you see your first, the, your, your big toe? Your big toe in your foot is medial or lateral? Media. Medial. Excellent. Media. The big toy is media. So how to remember that without looking at picture? So just remember this. Between the tibia and the fibula, just to remember, a way to remember, this is going to be a, a who, which one do you think is, or you look, looks like it's bigger or more thicker? The tibia or the fibula? The tibia, right? So the tibia is on the side of the big toe. So big bone, big toe. Okay? So medial and medial. Just to remember. Another way to remember is the fibula. Fibula, you can say fibulateral. Or no? Okay?
Hello, are you are you there? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So let's keep going with the with the definition. Proximal and distal. Uh, proximal is proximity close to. For example, uh, proximal is basically the 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 reference is going to be the heart. Everything that is closer to the heart is proximal. You okay with that? Look at this. If I have a bone here on my forearm, and I have a bone here on my um, um, arm and my forearm here, my forearm have a bone and my arm have another bone. Which one is proximal? The forearm or the arm? Arm. The arm. Because it's closer to the heart. Okay? Now, if I have a boom here on my wrist and a boom here on this portion of my forearm, so this is A and this is B. A and B. Which is more proximal, A or B? B. B. B, B. correct? Right? So, and you can say proximal, proximal to the elbow. Right? Yes or no? Proximal to the elbow means close by the elbow. So you have two bones. One is distal and the other is proximal to the elbow. Got it? So we have two bones. So whatever is closer towards the heart, that is going to be proximal. Or if you want to have a reference point, like in this case, the elbow, your reference now will be the elbow. If the elbow is your reference and you have a bone close to the wrist, and uh, another here, this is A and B, this is proximal to the to the elbow. If I want to, I want to say another one. You can say this a bone is distal away from the elbow, distal from the elbow. For example, my foot is distal to my knee. It's away from my knee. You don't have the foot in your knee, right? So the foot is away from your knee. That is distal, distal. The foot is distal to the knee, for example. You okay with that? Is that clear or no? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Okay, planes of division. This is something that we already mentioned. We have uh, frontal or coronal planes. So you already know you cut the person between anterior and posterior. Anterior and posterior. Sagittal plane is going to divide into the right and left. We have the mid-sagittal plane, or we call the uh, uh, mid-sagittal plane, and we have the other one, the parasagittal. All of them, as well, divide the body into right and left. Okay? Transverse or horizontal, transverse or horizontal, are going to divide into superior and inferior. Planes are going to be slanting, slanting uh, cuts that are going to be any place, just to mention oblique, oblique plane, just to mention. So oblique plane will be like this, any, any angle that is actually, as you said, a slanting angle. Okay, so you have practice questions there. And this is what you need to go into your, uh, when you are uh, at home, as entertainment, you're going to use this PowerPoint, this uh, slide. So you see by colors here. What is superior? Superior are going to be above, higher, down, and etc. This is coming for the exam. Okay, so you need to know very well those those terms. All right, so let's talk about the basic uh, health and its six dimensions: disease and prevention. All right. <clears throat> So for this, I want just to uh, go into the definition of what is health and what is wellness. So we have two terms, health and wellness. Health and wellness. All right. Health are going to be basically the lack of uh, uh, abnormalities in your anatomy and physiology. So what is an unhealthy patient? Unhealthy patient is where basically the function of an organ or many organs 
or and the anatomy of bone organs or systems are abnormal, right? So the organs or the anatomy or the physiology, when it's away from the normal, that is actually a, uh, considered uh, unhealthy disease, sick. So the health is a condition of being sound in body, mind, spirit, freedom, and physical disease of pain. So for this, besides that we was talking that is uh, in the normal range of physiology of the function and anatomy, there is other, other components that are going to create uh, form what is the definition of health. So for this, what I want to tell you is this, very important. Remember this forever. The patient is not just the disease. You are not, if you have a cold, you are not a virus. You are not a cold. So you are more than that, more than that. So that means that a, a person needs to be treated for all other components in his, this process. So we are going to see that what we call the health dimensions, the health dimensions that is going to be in a few moments. Now, wellness. What is wellness? Wellness looks like it's the same to say uh, health, but it's actually a difference. Wellness is basically your your uh, your uh, your lifestyle, your lifestyle, lifestyle. What means lifestyle? Lifestyle means your diet and exercises, diet and exercises. Okay, your habits. Okay. Uh, uh, substances, drugs or not, smoking, whatever, wellness. For example, you are totally healthy. You are very healthy. You consider yourself healthy, right? You are healthy, right? But you are eating your diet, your, your balanced diet, your proteins, your carbohydrates, your fats, your water, vitamins, fiber, minerals, etc. So perfect. So you you have a, you are uh, actually your wellness is on the right right spot but now what happens if you are healthy totally healthy very healthy but you are eating kentucky fried chicken every day your wellness is going to be poor poor wellness because you are you are healthy right now but later on because of your bad wellness you're going to have a disease so wellness and health, they go together. So health are going to have different components, and we are going to see now. Uh, there you are. Health. Health dimensions. We are talking about health versus uh, wellness. This is health, your physical physical uh, component, your actual physical body health. How, how is your physical? You, you can do all the all activities, you are not limited to do uh, some some uh, things uh, uh, or whatever. So you all your uh, activity, locomotion are going to be uh, okay. Mental, thought process, memory, logic, solving problems. So mental dimension. Mental dimension is how you are reasoning, how you perceive the perception of the surrounding world around you. This is, for example, uh, uh, this is the uh, daylight, right? So you are not at night. You are at home. You are not in the hospital. So where are you? I'm in the beach. No, you are not in the beach. You are in your house, right? So mental, thought, process, memory, logic, and thought problems. Then we have a spiritual. A spiritual is your relationship with yourself. So are you happy or what you are right now? So. Happy or unsatisfied? Sat unsatisfied is different, right? I always unsatisfied because I want to do better in many things, right? But spiritual uh, actually is the happiness that overall you have about yourself. Are you feel uh, happy to do what you're doing now? Are you overall in your family, are you feel happy within your friends? Are you happy? Are you happy in the school? That is going to impact in your health. For, uh, for example, if uh, we are going to complete with emotional, social ability to connect with others for and from healthy relationships with them. So, what does it mean? Humans, as by nature, we are social, social uh, individuals. Social, we socialize. We cannot be living alone. 
always we are living in a society. The result of this is we live in between people, right? We cannot be isolated. So when you are isolated, you have your health are actually being uh, actually affected. For example, if you have some isolation, you probably suffer from depression. You are having depression, depression for for uh, for whatever reason. Emotional, emotional are going to be your feelings. For example, it's not very well defined feelings because. Feelings is an affection that means lasts longer. Emotions is more temporary. Emotion, for example, are you happy right now? Happiness, you, you smile and laughing. But you are smile and laughing 24-7? You are not, right? So those emotions are moments, right? Angry, when you get anger. So when you get anger or your anger, how long is going to last that? You are, you are hang, anger all your all the seven 24 7 no you are not right so there's fluctuations on that right so emotional so when these emotions are uh, basically uh, over dimension uh, they can produce some problems uh, can reflect some health problems on this patient environmental environmental you have a, a home and workplace so if you are actually studying and you're working studying for example you don't want to be in an environment that everybody's fighting or everybody's coming in coming out or everybody is making noise or everybody is doing trying to talk to you disturbing you and that is actually can affect your level of health okay emotional environmental social spiritual mental and physical physical okay you okay with that so how many dimensions we have six dimensions i will give you something for you for yourself right now okay so i want you to apply this at home okay first homework 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 okay homework yes homework okay so what is stress and what is anxiety is the same what do you think shiny what to say is it's the same or different what is the difference Okay, so very fast because we have short of time. But uh, you said what, what is stress and what was the other one? Anxiety versus stress. Society versus stress. Anxiety. Anxiety, anxiety. versus stress. Stress is when you're upset about or when you like are upset about something. Um, it's anger, right? Yeah. And anxiety is like when you're, let's talk, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, kind of like, I don't know. I know what I'm trying to say, but I don't know the word that I'm looking for. Like, cause I, sometimes I experience anxiety if I'm like, if I'm in a small, in a small space, like if I'm claustrophobic or something, I have anxiety because every, like, I feel like the walls uh, are broken. Like so example. That, okay. So that is called phobias. That is part of the. No, like I have anxiety. Like sometimes I'll get anxiety. Like if I feel. Yeah, no, no. Phobia, phobia, the classification is under anxiety disorders. Mm -hmm. so phobia is an anxiety. So I will tell you what is a stress, what is anxiety in very few, in few words. Number one, a stress. A stress was when you wake up in the morning late. And you didn't know that you need to come to the school or online. So it was confusing. So what do you need to do? You're going to call the teacher or communicate to resolve the problem. Correct? So you already know what was the situation. Now, you wake up late and you have no gas in your car. No gas in your car. That is a, actually and how you're going to resolve that with uh, waking up early or going faster. So what is a stress? A stress is a problem, and anxiety is a problem as well. Any problem. Anxiety is a problem when you face a problem, and anxiety is when you face a problem. What is the difference? In a stress, you have a problem, and you know what to do to resolve the problem. That is a stress. And anxiety is when you have a problem, and you said, you know what? I don't know what to do. That is anxiety. 
Clear? The homework yeah. is to recognize yeah. how many are stressed and, 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 and anxious uh, in your surrounding. Okay, a stress can lead in for the stress can lead in, if that is last for a long time into anxiety, and anxiety can lead into many other things. If you have anxiety for a long period of time, you can lead into depression, schizophrenia. Anxiety, anxiety like phobias, for example. Okay, so that is the difference. Are you okay with that? So just remember, let's go, let, going back to our our uh, our topic, is that the patient you need to look in all these six dimensions. The patient is not a pill. The patient is not a medication. The patient is not a disease only. The patient is more than that. Just think about how you want to be treated. Okay, take a pill and goodbye. So, but you need to have patient education. Patient education is how you care about the patient and some orientation about the problem. So that is something, for example, taking care of the six dimensions of health. Patient education. When you have patient education, you're practicing your you're practicing your uh, uh, six dimensions. Patient education and right, patient education is part of the nursing process. So you always need to talk about patient education. All right. So I'm not saying that patient education is the six dimensions. It's part of that. Okay. So if you care about the emotions, the feelings, the beliefs, the uh, the belief uh, and the environment where the, the patient is coming from, you are taking care of the patient in the a complete way. So you don't treat the patient just as a disease. You okay with that? Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about prevention. We have about three types of prevention. We have primary disease prevention, secondary disease prevention, and tertiary disease prevention. So Prevention, prevention. So three types: primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary, primary is going to basically to prevent. Right now, primary is prevent diseases. Prevent diseases. Prevent. What means prevent? Prevent means, for example, you do not smoke. Don't smoke. If you smoke, you have risk for cancers, right? So smoking can produce cancer. Alcohol, alcohol can produce liver cancer as well, cirrhosis and then cancer. Prevention, another primary prevention is are the vaccinations, vaccinations, your vaccinations. Vaccinations is a primary prevention. You're going to prevent. Now, secondary prevention is going to, to identify the disease early. Identification of the disease early. Early, early identification. Early identification. Secondary prevention example will be when you go to the doctor to your annual, annual checkup. Annual checkup. So every year you have an annual checkup. And what is the purpose of that? To detect earlier a disease, if that is the case. And that is your visit to the doctor annually. Well, that is one example. What is the purpose of, or purpose of that? To detect earlier a disease. Okay? The first one is totally preventing. Smoking, no, no Kentucky Fried Chicken, no McDonald's, no a lot of sodas, no smoking, no a lot of alcohol. That is prevention, primary prevention. The secondary prevention is when you go to the visit to detect the disease earlier, if that is the case. And the tertiary, tertiary is when you already have a diagnosis and you need to actually uh, re-up. You need to recover from the disease. For example, if you have uh, a trauma, you need to, have to go to the re-up, I mean to physical therapy, not re-up, the physical therapy. In the physical therapy, they are going to help you to recover the functions of that part of your body, 
All right? So that is primary, secondary, and tertiary prevention. All right, so just to go over the PowerPoint, primary disease is the prevention of behavior that increase risk of disease. Cigarette, alcohol, right? Too much fat, too much uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken or McDonald's, whatever. Secondary is early diagnosis, regular checkups. Tertiary disease we have after it already has been diagnosed, okay? So they are going to need actually a follow-up. It's basically in chronic diseases, diabetes, uh, hypertension. When you have a broken bone as well, you need to have uh, um, actually physical therapy. So those are tertiary, basically it's all specialties that are going to treat the patient after a diagnosis. Okay, let's talk about bioscience. What is bioscience? All right, so you know science is based in, it's in observation and experimentation, right? Your experimentation and observation, that is the basic thing of, of science. So you cannot, uh, in science, you cannot uh, uh, say something that exists without knowing what is the uh, structure, what is the components, and what are the activity or action or functions of the structure. So all of this is based on observation and experiment experimentation. All right, so science, we have different components. We have biology, biology, some biology branches. We have embryology, histology. We will talk in this program, in this, not this course, in this program, embryology a little bit. Histology, cells, anatomy, of course, physiology, pathology, epidemiology, study of the disease in your population. We are going to cell biology, ecology, not so much. Genetics, we are going to talk in this bioscience. Biochemistry, biochemistry, we are going to talk a lot about how is the metabolism of the carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Microbiology, we, we are going to talk that in this course too. Bacteria, viruses, uh, uh, protozoas, etc. Uh, we have um, my, uh, my, uh, mole molecular biology is a touch, just a few things. It's important because when you are going to do pharmacology, you need to talk about basically receptors, how the receptors are work. Mycology is a study of uh, fungus infection. Oncology is a study. We are going to talk about mycology, oncology, cancer. I'm sure we are going to talk about that. Paleontology, we are not going to talk about dinosaurs, or et cetera. All right, so this paleontology we are not, is not part of that. Parasitology, yes, we will talk about parasitology in anatomy, physiology. Pharmacology, of course. Virology, virus. Agriculture, no. Bot uh, botany, a little bit. So in some herbs that we are going to talk in pharmacology. So if you see from all what I mentioned, there is many branches of biology. And what we are doing in this course called me uh, uh, Essential Medical Bioscience is to pick up all the material for all for many of these branches to direct it in what you need to know for your nursing nursing program. And every time we are going to talk, whatever, even cells, you can do a fine scene that you can apply at home. Remember, one more time, applying at home scenes is the best way to remember things. All right, anatomy. Anatomy is the natural form, uh, studying of the natural form of an organ or a structure. So anatomy, are going to, there is different type of anatomy. Know that we are different people and with a different anatomy. No, we have a study anatomy. We have a topographic, descriptive, a cross sectional, functional, and, a, and gross anatomy. The anatomy that we are going to use from bioscience and anatomy physiology is the gross anatomy. Gross anatomy. Gross anatomy. Gross anatomy. This gross anatomy is basically the description of the organ, of the location, shape, and color. So everything that you can see with your bare eye. That is a gross anatomy, gross anatomy. The division of that kidney, the division of the GI tract, you, something that you can see with your very eye, right? And uh, actually, that is the 
what we call gross anatomy. This is the anatomy that we are going to study these semesters. Physiology is the study of the function of the body, function of the body. So the liver, the kidney, the brain, the uh, different organs are having some functioning that we can detect or we can assess or monitor through the laboratory tests, okay? Physiology and anatomy, anatomy and physiology. One thing before I'm going to continue, and hopefully it's going to give me a little bit more time. My God, one's 17. Tell me one thing. What is, when you have a disease, this is important, huh? don't forget, and never in your life. Uh, what if, when you have a disease, what is changing first? The anatomy or the physiology? Yeah. What is changing first? Anatomy, we have one anatomy somewhere. I don't know if you say that, but it's okay. Physiology. Physio one physiology, one anatomy, what else? Anatomy. Anatomy, two anatomies, one physiology, A or B. Anatomy, physiology. I can read your. Anatomy. Oh, you. Anatomy. anatomy, anatomy, anatomy. Three anatomies, one physiology. Uh, uh, Marcel, please. I want to say physiology. Physiology, two physiology, three, and the last one, Marilyn. Um, I think physiology. Sorry. Physiology. Listen to this. Is the physiology who changed first? The physiology changed first. I will give you one example, two examples, three examples. First example are going to be, for example, you have uh, your knee. You have arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. Okay? So, when you have rheumatoid arthritis in your knee, or in making the right knee, you have pain, correct? You have pain, right? So, and then you start to limp, yes or no? Right? So the first thing is going to start limping. So the function of the locomotion of the lower extremity is being altered. But this person in 20, 25 years, 30 years with the same problem, don't you see that these people with long run uh, rheumatoid arthritis, they have to start to have some deformities on the lower extremities. They become deformed, yes or no? Yes. You notice, notice that? Yes, right? Yes. Another thing, yes. alcohol. Alcohol. In alcohol, you drink alcohol, who is going to suffer it? The liver. The liver. The liver, the alcohol, any any amount of alcohol produces a type of hepatitis. Hepatitis, hepatitis is an inflammation of the liver. So hepatitis is not just hepatitis A or B or C, those are viruses. Hepatitis can be for other reasons. Alcohol can produce inflammation of the liver, but the liver, the liver is going to start being destroyed and there you don't have any, any changes on the liver. The liver is still working normally. So, but if you take a laboratory test, the enzymes are going to be elevated. So that means there is destruction of the liver. In the long run, after many years, your liver start to shrink. Your liver start to be from 20, 22 centimeters are going to be 10 to 12 centimeters shrink. That is the anatomical position, anatomical changes, anatomical changes. So that means cirrhosis, so that is another proof that actually when you have a problem or disease, the first thing that is changing is the physiology. And then later is coming the changes of the anatomy. Is that clear or not? Yes. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Very good. Yes. All right, so let's remark here about homeostasis. Homeostasis is, just write it down, is that how the body keep the internal balance. The body is keeping the internal balance. The body is trying to keep the internal balance. For example, if you are dehydrated, if you are dehydrated, and that is homeostasis. Homeostasis is the relationship between the nervous system and the endocrine system. 
endocrine system and nervous system. Nervous system and endocrine system. That is the relation between what we call homeostasis. This relationship between the nervous system and the endocrine system is called homeostasis. Is in other words, how the body keeps the internal balance. If you are dehydrated, who knows that? The nervous system. The nervous system knows that you are dehydrated. So the nervous system is telling the endocrine system to do something in order to keep the, the water in your body. So don't produce too much pee. So that is the relation. So the nervous system are going to tell the endocrine system to do something to keep trying to keep the internal balance. If you are losing water, you're trying to keep as much water you can in your body. Temperature. If you have high temperature, your body start to, and that's, who knows that? The central nervous system. And they are going to connect to the, to the glandular tissue that is the, is the uh, sweat glands. That is the proof that when you are hot, you're going to sweat. Right? Give me a second, please. Okay. All right, so we okay with that? So what is the first thing that you need to come to your mind when I said homeostasis? Okay, nervous system and endocrine. That is the majority of, the, there's other homeostasis, calcium, etc., phosphate, but the 90% of homeostasis is going to be between the nervous system and the endocrine system. We okay with that? I have a quick question. So for the endocrine system, that's mainly like the sweat glands, you said? Can you speak louder because I can't hear you? You are about awake. Endocrine system, that's like sweat glands, for an example? Yeah, any gland, any gland, okay? For example, homeostasis will be, uh, homeostasis is going to be the relationship between the, for example, you need to grow. Another example will be, you need to grow, who knows that? The, the nervous system. So what you're going to do? The, uh, going to release the growth hormone. You're going to grow. Uh, for example, you are lactating. You have a baby. You're lactating. Who knows that you're lactating? The nervous system. And what is doing the nervous system? It's telling the, uh, the glands to produce more prolactin, to produce more milk, and oxytocin as well. That is the ejection of the milk, and so on. When you are ovulating, who knows that you are ovulating, the nervous system. Uh, and that is going to in, uh, have some changes of hormones, the FSH, for example, and the LH, to produce the ovulation. So endocrine and nervous system always coming together to keep, to, to keep, the, to keep the, uh, the internal balance. All right, so let's talk about the uh, metabolism. All right, so metabolism is very important. We are going to use this a lot, so please pay attention to this. Okay, metabolism. Metabolism is, in other, in other words, how your body produces energy. How the body is going to produce energy. So, example of that. Tell me, when you are doing exercises, your metabolism is going high or low? High. High, right? So that means if your metabolism go high, that means your body is producing more energy. If you if you're a couch potato, you have vacations two three weeks doing nothing, they're laying down in your in your in your sofa or whatever, and they are going to metabolism go down. So you produce you require less energy. Okay. So metabolism in one word, oh how the body is going to produce energy. That is metabolism. Metabolism. Now, there is another way to define metabolism, and this is what I'm going to show you now. So, metabolism is actually all the reactions that happen in the body. Metabolism is equal to, say, anabolism and catabolism. So, there is two definitions that you need to remember. Metabolism is uh, all how the body are going to produce energy. And the other definition is that metabolism is anabolism plus catabolism reaction. What is anabolism? Anabolism means to build up, to build up. 
to build up, to build up. For example, you need to repair tissue. You are going to create tissue, cells, new cells. That is anabolic, anabolic. Catabolic is the opposite. How many of these you're going to break down? Why you need to break down? For example, the glucose, the glycogen, fat. You're going to obtain energy from those, from those, uh, um, from those uh, uh, nutrients. And that is what we call catabolism. Catabolism. Catabolism is cutting. Uh, uh, it's cutting. Anabolism, ana, bring everybody together. Anabolism and catabolism. So what is metabolism? Anabolism and catabolism. For example, I will tell you one thing. Uh, hopefully the time is getting me because the first lecture always is very short. I mean, in time. So collagen, collagen, okay? You know collagen, right? So you have collagen. Collagen is the cream that you see some people use for the skin and all that, right? Right? What is collagen? Collagen is a protein. And that protein is an elastic protein. Elastic protein. Elastic protein. Elastic, very flexible. And when you are young, do you have wrinkles in your face? No. Why? Because you have a lot of collagen. That's why. Collagen is going to be very... We, we produce a lot of collagen when uh, a person is young. So that means anabolic, building up collagen. Building up collagen. And what with the time, what happened? You get older, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, you start to have wrinkles. Why? Because you don't produce as, as much collagen as before. So you are losing the elasticity of your skin. So you are decreasing your anabolism. And when you get older, you become more catabolic. You don't build up. You don't renew, replace damaged tissue as before. So you are going to be more catabolic. So when you are young, you are more anabolic than catabolic. But when you are old, you are more catabolic than anabolic. So that's why we, we for example, collagen is elastic, right? So that is going to be located in the muscles and tendons. So that is going to give you the elasticity of your, of your movements, whatever you are doing, exercises, running, jumping, etc. right? Early people do not have enough collagen. So that's why early people become stiff and have rigidities. Yes or no? Right? Yeah. No, you got it or no? Everybody got it? Okay. So that is the example of anabolic building up and catabolic breaking down. Anabolic building up, catabolic breaking down. So what is metabolism? How to produce energy? And there are actually, the other definition is the summation of reactions, anabolic and catabolic, period. <coughs> all right, so, all right, so, so bioscience, any science that deals with the biological aspects of the living organisms, such as physics, chemistry, etc. So bioscience discourse is going to pick up all these information that are selectively, we are going to pick up information that is going to help you in the future to understand what is the anatomy and the physiology of the system. Because after that, we need to teach you pathophysiology. Pathophysiology. And you need to know that, and you know why? Because you need to know what is going to happen in the patient to know what you're going to do for the patient. So that's why you need to know anatomy, physiology, pathophysiology. Because otherwise, you will be just somebody tell you, do this, do that, do this, do that, do this. No, you need to have your own criteria. So and basically, uh, it's coming with the time. So, But you need to know all these disciplines, all these parts of the uh, compo components of bioscience. Pathology, question for the exam, is the study of that disease, the study of that disease. All right, so let's talk about the physics of life. What time is it, please? 1.30. 1.30. 1.30. Okay. 
Okay. So hopefully we have time here. Let me see what we are doing. Okay. So that is the hard part because it's uh, chemistry. We are going to see in this class and next class. So, but yes, follow me. I'm going to try to make it less painful. All right. So let's let's talk about matter and mass. Matter and mass. All right. Matter is anything that occupies a space and has a mass. For example, matter will be the the smallest unit of matter is an atom. Mass are going to be is uh, actually mass is going to be a group of atoms or molecules. Mass, matter. So what is? I want you to touch yourself, uh, your cell phone. If you touch your cell phone, there is a material that's being made of. Those are atoms you are touching, molecules that you are touching. That is the matter. Matter, in this case, will be solid, right? Solid matter. Mass are going to be the amount of these molecules together. Mass is the amount of these molecules that are together. So basically, mass is the amount of matter. Mass is the amount of matter. Mass is the amount of molecules of actually uh, atoms. Okay? So matter versus mass. What is the difference between mass and weight? The weight. Weight is the how the mass is pulling down by gravity towards the center of the earth. So the weight, the weight of your cell phone, the weight of your computer, the weight of the chair. So that chair has a mass. That mass is composed by matter. You okay with that? Okay. All right, so we'll talk about that. All right, so <clears throat> energy. Energy is the ability of physical system to do work. Okay, so that is the classical definition. Uh, energy is never is going to be destroyed, but actually they are going to be transformed. Energy. For example, I will give you some energy here. The energy of your car. Your car is running because you provide energy, right? That energy is going to be given by the gas, right? Gasoline that make combustion with the oxygen and release so much energy that make move your car, right? So that is basically one, one example. But now look at this. There is no machine created, or even our our body, that we don't use the hundred percent of the hundred percent of the of the energy that we produce. We don't use it. Why? Because part of that are being lost. How we explain this? You have your car. You make you turn on the uh, ignition of the car. The car start to run, doing everything you want. But after a few minutes, stop the car and put your hand on the engine. That is heat. That heat is being lost, dissipated on the space. Because that amount, that energy cannot be used by the car. So there is no really a perfect machine. For example, you go, uh, I just recently changed my furnace. My furnace is, in the, the past furnace was, 40% efficiency, 40% efficiency. So 40% that means that from all in the electricity I was using in that furnace, 40% was used for heat. But now I change it for a furnace that is 80%, 80% efficiency. So that means for all the energy electricity they are giving to the furnace, 80% is transformed into, into heat, okay? So heat is a dissipation of the, of the energy. So that's why you're going to see different types of energy that we are going to see here, forms of energy. Forms of energy, we have electricity, electrical, energy running electron. Why electricity is called electricity? Somebody can tell me? 
Why electricity is called electricity? Because they are running electrons. Electrons. And electricity are running electrons. Electrons. The light is a type of energy. Chemical energy will be, for example, the acid of your battery in your car, right? Chemicals are going to uh, uh, produce, for example, a breakdown of substances like acids, etc. Mechanical, mechanical force is when you, for example, you are doing exercises, right? Your, your muscles start to get heat, okay? Start to get warm, right? So this heat is basically is lost. We cannot use all the energy coming from the body. So some of this energy is going to be released as heat, as heat, okay? Now, this heat that is uh, the resultant of, uh, of uh, use energy, part of the energy is going to be used to move your arms, to talk, to sink, and part of that are going to dissipate as heat. And that heat is very difficult to use or to reuse again. So that's why heat is considered the lowest form of energy because that actually cannot be reused again. So it's going to be lost in the environment. Okay? You okay with that? Yes. Okay. Okay, chemical energy. All right, so tell me, is somebody familiar with the ATPs? ATPs? ATP, somebody knows what is ATP? No, okay. Please answer me because I, I need to elaborate. All right, so no? Okay. Uh, saying that, uh, let's see, because I need to find it. Okay, chemical energy. Chemical energy are coming from the bones of the molecules. This is huge, so please pay attention. For example, the carbohydrates are, are molecules. Let's suppose this is the carbohydrates is a molecule like this. Now, when I'm going to break down this molecule, are at are bond, B O N D, are bond to each other. In order to get break or break down this molecule, I need some energy. And that energy is going to be released in the environment. So that energy coming from the food are going to be used to produce energy in the body. Okay, the ATPs. I'm not going to mention more than that. But that is why you need to eat. Why you need to eat? Why do you need to eat? Because you said, okay, because energy is coming from the food. So what part of the food is coming from that energy? The energy is coming from the broken bones, B-O-N-D, bones. Right, so that energy release are going to be used for, for to produce energy in your body. Okay, so that is uh, we will see that in detail next time, but that is what is uh, chemical energy, for example. Chemical energy, we use chemical energy from the food. That energy is going to be transformed in another form that called the ATPs. That we are going to use for our daily activities. All right, so so chemical chemical energy. All right, so we have three states of matter. The three states of matter is solid, liquid, and gas. Solid, the molecules are going to be close to each other, so they are actually lowest energy. So basically, they are not moving. The energy is coming basically from the electrons. And this energy, when you are solid, the molecules are very close to each other. So that's why the, the structure is solid. Liquid, the molecules are going to be a little bit more apart from each other. They are not so close. But they're higher energy than the, than the solid. And gas, gas, we have oxygen, nitrogen, aliens, neon, xenon, xenon etc. gases. These gases are very apart from each other. And that is basically considered the highest energy state when this gas, when this gas, okay? For example, you have the coal, the, you have water, you boil the water, you start to have this evaporation, right? So 
they're going to, because you are increasing the temperature, the water starts to a different state. That is a vapor, it's a fumes. But if you increase even more the temperature, you will see dissipated as a gas, as a gas. These fumes, for example, when you have a hot pot and you put it in the water, there's a smoke coming up, right? That is not gas, that is actually evaporation, the molecules of water evaporating somewhere. Gas is the highest state of air. All right, so let's talk about atom and this, actually I need to talk about the, we are going to make a summary about this. And I want just you to pay attention to what we are doing. And then we have the math. Okay, so let's start. Atom. Atom is the basic unit of matter, period. Okay, and for this, I'm going to start doing, this is the introduction for next class. So we are going to talk about next class about bonds like ionic, covalent, polar, covalent, non polar. So you need to be alert on that. So let's start doing this. Uh, we are going to talk about isotopes that is very important for medical uses. So that's why we are talking about atoms. All right. So number one, atom is the smallest unit of matter. We okay with that, right? Because they have a mass, right? So now an atom is composed and looks like it's simple, but I will tell you more. Is composed by a nucleus and orbits, correct? Okay, the nucleus are going to compose by protons and neutrons, and the orbits are going to be composed by electrons. Okay? Now, the number of protons, so protons are positive charge. Neutrons are going to be a neutral. Neutrons, neutral. So no charge. And the electrons are going to be negative. Okay. Now, listen to this. The number of protons, the number of protons in the nucleus are exactly the same the number of protons of the number of neutrons in the nucleus. So if I have eight protons here, I have eight neutrons. If I have two protons, I have two neutrons. So the number of protons are going to be the same a number of neutrons. And the number of protons and neutrons are going to be the same of the number of electrons. If I have eight protons, I have eight neutrons. So I have eight electrons. If I have two protons, I have two neutrons, I have two electrons. Okay? So that is what we have in that periodic table. In the periodic table of Mendeleev, you're going to have all these elements, and we are going to highlight some of them. So we okay with that? Yep. Okay. Okay. So there's a lot of rules that I'm going to make a summary, but we, we can't, we, we, but I'm going to tell you this. This is more simple. It's the same, but all right. So hydrogen, we have here one. Lithium, we have three. Sodium, we have 11. 11 what? We have 11 electrons. If you have 11, as you have 11 electrons, you have 11 protons. You have 11 neutrons, okay? If they say here 26 iron, iron is going to have 26 positive charges, protons, 26 negative charges, and 26 neutrons. Is that clear or not? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, we already know that, so be, pay attention to these numbers, okay? All right, perfect. So, now we are going to see that basically for our homework, exercises, you're going to consider this, basically think about electrons. And let's talk about the orbits. We have orbits, orbits. If this is the nucleus, this is the nucleus, nucleus, we have one orbit, we can have two orbits, we have three orbits, we have four orbits and many more. So the first orbit, in order to be happy, let's put it that way, means there is no, there is an equilibrium of energy 
the first orbit, this is the, I'm going to put orbit here, and this is the first orbit, first, this is the second orbit, this is the third orbit, this is the fourth orbit, this is the fifth orbit. In order to be happy, uh, an atom, you need to have in the first orbit maximum two electrons. Two electrons. In the second orbit, you need to have maximum eight electrons. Eight electrons. In the third orbit, you're going to have eight electrons as well, maximum. The, sec the fourth orbit is going to be how much? Uh, uh, just a moment. It's going to be uh, 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 18. And the next is 36 and 72, etc. So we are not going to know that. We don't go all the way. So you're going to learn only the, the three first orbits. Remember 288, 288, 288. For example, let's do the distribution now. The distribution, let's talk about the uh, lithium. Lithium, how many electrons we have? Three electrons. So we have three protons here, right? And the three neutrons, I'm not going to write it down, but you already know there's three neutrons. And in the first orbit, you should have only maximum two electrons. So to be happy. Then the, third, the second orbit, you should have eight, but you have only one because they said three electrons. So you have minus one. So minus two minus one is minus three. So three plus three minus three plus three is zero. So all these elements that you see in the periodic table, they have zero charge. There is no charge in between. There is zero charge. So when they're going to become having a charge is very simple. Now, first of all, you're going to do the distribution of the electrons. Two in the first, one, because I don't have more, one is the only one who stay there, one. So in this case, look at this, in the second orbit, I should have, to be happy, this atom, I should have eight electrons. I have eight, I need to have eight electrons. So tell me one thing, what is going to be easier for this lithium? to gain seven electrons or to lose one electron? Lose one. They're going to lose one electron. So when they lose this electron, you already have three protons in the nucleus minus, okay, I'm going to put here, minus two electrons in the, in the peripheral area, in the orbit, plus three on the nucleus. That is going to be giving plus one. That is going to be plus one. So lithium is going to be write it down like this, plus. Or you can write it down plus one like that. Let's talk about the sodium. 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 And we can do for any of these. Uh, sodium. Sodium, how many electrons we have? Everybody, please. please. How many electrons we have in sodium? How many electrons we have in the sodium? Tell me, I don't, I don't know, I don't, uh, tell me something, but tell me something. How many electrons we have, the, where is the sodium? This is the sodium. How many, 11, 11 electrons. So you're going to have sodium here, you got sodium, you're going to have 11 electrons. So. In the nucleus, you have 11 protons, but in the orbit, you have two in the first orbit. We have eight in the second orbit, so maximum is eight, two, ten, and I have one in the last orbit, in the third orbit. In the third orbit, how many electrons I, just, I should have? Eight. Eight electrons. So I have only one. So what is going to be easier, to gain seven or to lose one? Lose one. Lose one. If you lose one, now you have 11 from this positive minus 10. 
minus 10. And that is giving you plus 1. So sodium are going to enter into plus 1. So this is the when they gain or to lose an electron. We okay with that or no? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Everything is clear? Shanae, you, you're clear on that? Yes. Nant, you're clear on that? Yes. Aaron, Aaron. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You know, you look like my 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 nephew. Yeah, I will show Me? you. Yeah, you look like my nephew. I don't know. <laughs> really. Yeah, he's in. Well, I will. I will I'm so proud of him too, I'm very much. But anyhow, he's going to be an uh, Air Force pilot. Uh, he's going to, yeah, very, very good. But anyhow, all right, so that was his passion since he was a kid. Uh, okay, so I'm going to make uh, another example. So, for example, let's do calcium, uh, no calcium, yeah, calcium if you want, potassium, let's do potassium. Potassium, they have how many electrons? Potassium? 19. 19, excellent. All right, so let's work on potassium. In potassium, we have 19. 19 protons, 19 neutrons, 19 electrons. So you have 19 positive charges charged in the nucleus. And you have minus 2, minus 8, 10. Then I have... Another eight is going to be eight, eight, sixteen, eighteen, right? And what I have in the in the last orbit, I need to I have only minus one. Yes or no? Yeah. yeah. In this orbit, you need to I'm not going to give this example, but in this orbit you need to have 18 electrons to be happy in the molecule. Be happy means stable. And if that is the case, it's going to be easier to gain. 18 negative charges or to lose one negative charge. What is going to be easier? To lose one. To lose. So now I lose this one and I have minus 2, minus 8, minus 10. Minus 10, minus 8 is minus 18. But in the nucleus I have plus 19. And the difference with, between these, plus 19 minus 18 is going to be plus 1. So potassium is going to be plus one. Or you can write, write it down like this, plus. Okay? Yes. All right, so let's go to something else here. Um, let's go magnesium. Magnesium is having 12. Are going to be 12, magnesium. Magnesium is going to be 12. So how many protons I have? 12, 12 protons. 12 protons. In the first orbit, how many electrons I will have? Two. two. Minus two. two. In the second Minus two. Minus eight. And the third orbit? Minus two. Minus and how many I supposed to have? So in order to be happy, I need to have two. It's perfect, okay. In the second row, I need to have eight. Perfect. I have, in the third row, you need to have eight, but I have minus two. So what is happening here? You're going to lose or to gain uh, electrons? To gain electrons. But what is what is more easy? To gain, to gain six electrons or to lose two electrons? To lose two electrons. So let's lose it. To lose two electrons. And you have now, actually, magnesium, we have plus 12, minus, minus 8, minus 10. And that is going to be plus 2. Plus, so plus. Magnesium will be plus, plus, as you said, or magnesium plus 2. Either way. You okay with that? Is that clear or not? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, I want just to tell you one more thing here before we go to the calculations. So if you see here, again, so all these are the numbers. Number, 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 number. So if you have here, 
please the noise. Uh, if you have here those and all these elements, for example, titanium, you have 22 protons and 22 electrons. Minus uh, plus 22 minus 22 is zero. So none of these elements or minerals are going to have a charge yet. They are not going to have a charge. Why? Because, for example, we have uh, what is indium. 49 protons, we have 49 electrons. So 40 plus 49 minus 49 is zero, right? So we have our, uh, arsenicum, or let's make it cobalt, or nickel, copper. Copper is 29. 29, we have 29 positive, 29 negative. So the charge is zero. So none of these elements or minerals, elements or minerals, so please, there is a noise there. Elements or minerals, in, in called elements or minerals are the same. None of them in this table have a charge. They are zero. So when they are going to interact, they are going to lose or gain electrons. Let's make one more example. Let's do uh, fluoride. Fluoride. Fluoride in the table said nine. Where is that? Nine. See? Fluoride. Nine. Fluoride, nine, are going to be positive nine in the nucleus, minus two, minus eight, uh, no, uh, minus seven. Right? Yes or no? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Tell me, this fluoride is going to, what is more easier, to gain one electron or to lose seven electrons? Huh? To, to gain one electron. To one electron. So one electron is coming. So now instead to have minus seven, I have man, minus eight. Minus two is minus ten. Plus nine of the nucleus is going to be minus one. So the fluoride is minus one or just minus. Okay? Yes. We're okay. Okay. Yeah, it's like a game, game, right? It's not, nothing, nothing. Oh, okay, so now, just to complete this part, you're going to have that elements are going to be called or minerals. Those are the the uh, the table of Mendelian. Elements are minerals. They are going to actually when they lose, they can lose or gain electrons. You already know in the previous, they obtain a charge. But so this amount of gain of low or lose or gain electrons are going to be called the valency. <clears throat> what is valency? Valency means the amount of electrons that can be gained or lost. Okay? You okay with that? Yes. Okay. Now, yeah. when they lose or gain electrons, these are going to be having a charge. These charts are going to be called ions. 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 What is an ion? An ion is an element or mineral who has a charge, or positive or negative. Ions are going to be, be divided into uh, cations and anions. Cations are positive and anions negative. How to remember this? Cations, look at it how I'm writing. Cation. What is this? Positive, correct? Okay, all right, so those are actually cations, uh, cation and anion. Anion will be negative, like the fluoride minus, and cation will be like, for example, sodium plus one, sodium, potassium, chloride, chloride here. Okay, all right, so that is cation and anions, ions, cation, and anions. So they're going to be basically. Uh, 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 that is what happened when they are losing or gain electrons. Losing or gain electrons means balancing. 
and this turn into cation or an anion. Now, we have another word that you need to remember are going to be called the electrolytes. Electrolytes. What are electrolytes? Are ions? Are elements or minerals? Electrolytes are ions, but in body fluids. So, body fluid. When they are going to be incorporated or are already incorporated in your body, these ions are going to be called electrolytes. What is elect What are electrolytes? Actually, uh, uh, elements and minerals who has a charge. The main electrolytes in the body are going to be the sodium, the potassium, the chloride, the calcium, the magnesium. Okay? So those are the main electrolytes that you have in your body. They have a charge. This, uh, I want, what is, what for we are learning this? Oh, finish. What for we are learning this? Because this positive, positive or negative charges is like a magnet. They are going to attract each other. This attraction between them is what is going to make one atom and another atom to get together. And that is the beginning of the formation of a molecule. And that is the beginning to form the organelles, the cells, the organ, the tissue, the organ, the system, the body. Those are actually what we talked in the first uh, uh, slide of the lecture today. Okay? So that is about that part. So let's do the math portion. It's going to give me a couple of minutes. We okay with that? Yes. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the, the homework is about to convert, conversion. Conversion of, uh, this is, don't, please don't get confused. Huh? This is 200 pounds into kilograms. 55 pounds of, forget about this number because those are look like it's 2.55 now. 200 pounds into kilogram, uh, 55 pounds into pounds, pounds in kilogram, kilograms into pounds. So now what, I, what I'm going to show you is how to do the conversion. For any conversion, for whatever conversion you have, for whatever conversion you have, you need to have the equivalent. That is something that you need to memorize. The equivalents are going to be, for example, that one kilogram is equal to, say, 2.2 pounds. Okay with that? That is what you need to remember. Okay? Okay, now, let's change pounds to kilogram. Look at this, what I'm doing. Huh? 200 pounds... I want to change into kilograms. How I do that? Very simple. If you're going to do the method of what is bigger, what is smaller, what is heavy, what is more lighter, you're going to get so confused. So don't try, don't resist. Don't try to open your mind because these exercises is is going to be used for later on because there is some higher calculations. For example, if I tell you. The patient is receiving three milligrams of a drug per kilogram per day, and the patient is having seven, uh, 70 kilos or 70 pounds or 100 pounds. So, how much of that dose you're going to receive? For, that is just part of the whole calculation, and that is the very beginning. So, number one is that I ask you, for example, I receive three milligrams of the drug for every kilo of the patient in a day. But the patient giving the information is 200 pounds. So I cannot do the calculation because I need first to change pounds into kilograms. And that's why you need to start doing this. All right, so how to change pounds to kilograms? Number one, you write down 200 pounds and you multiply by a fraction. Very simple, huh? Very simple. So what is bothering you? What is upsetting you? Pounds. So I want to make pounds evaporate, disappear, go away. So for that, what I want to put is pounds low here because they are going to cancel 
I want to put pounds down because they're going to cancel. But what I want to see, I want to see kilograms. Okay, I have kilograms. And then you go to the to your equivalents. You know that one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. So pounds and pounds, they go away and you multiply and you divide that. That is about 77 kilos. How much is that? <clears throat> so you multiply 200 plus one, two times, 200 by one is 200 and kilograms stay there. So you divide into 2.2. That is your result. And 2 point is 50, 100, 10, like 80 pounds, 80 kilos? 90.90. 90. Okay. 90.9. So that is giving me, giving me 90.9 kilograms. You want another one? One more? Yes. Yes, one more. Okay. All right, so you already know the equivalence, right? The equivalence is going to be one kilogram equal to 0.2 pounds. So I need to change 55 kilos into pounds again uh, in the other way. So what I'm going to do, I put 55 kilograms, that is what this is giving me, and I want to change into pounds. So I'm going to do the same situation. I'm going to multiply by a fraction. I don't want kilograms anymore. I want to disappear kilograms. So I need to cancel that. How am I going to cancel? Always I put in the other side, kilograms. And then what I want to see? I want to see pounds. Now I do my equivalence. I know that one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So now kilograms and kilograms cancel. And I multiply 55 times 2.2 in pounds. How much is that? It's 110. 141? Okay. 121? 121. Okay, 121 pounds. Okay? Yeah. Yes. One, yes. More, one more or we okay? We're okay. Okay. I got it. Yeah, don't be afraid to tell me don't know, huh? because I'm telling you, uh, you know, I've been, I've been studying, working as a doctor many years, and, uh, and I'm not afraid to say I don't know. Don't be afraid, I don't know. And you especially, because you're a student. You shouldn't know everything that we, we talk here. So you have the right to tell me I don't know. And I like that, because that gives me that you are, are hungry for, for knowledge, for information. Okay, guys, so uh, let me see. Uh, Marilyn, how, how do you feel about the class? Um, I'm feeling pretty good. You explain everything well and ask if we have any questions and give us a chance to ask. Okay, and that is going to be the rest of the course. All the courses I teach is like that. But participation, don't leave me alone because if you leave me alone, I, I feel like, I mean, I feel anxiety, right? So... All right, so just tell me, mm, yes, ah, yes, okay, good, or something like that. Okay, Daniel, please, what is your opinion about the class today? What we can improve, what we can do better, how, how, you, how, you, how we perform in class? Everything was good. Um, clear, clear notes. Um, I like the symbols on the PowerPoint kind of to indicate what we need to focus on. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I will tell you one thing, uh, give me uh, one minute, uh, is that the class is just not me. Huh? I'm not the class. I'm not only in the uh, class. The class is you, all of you, and myself. If you, have, you want to have a very good lecture, very, participate. All the questions are accepted. All questions are accepted. Thank you so much, uh, Daniel. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Ms. Marcio, please, your opinion. Oh, I agree with um, with Daniel. I like how you do, um, how you'll do the drawings and um, elaborate on the things in the PowerPoint. Um, I actually did some reading of your um, 
of the PDF before class. So I did find that helpful that you have that available to us too. You, what you and said then, is so important. If you read the lecture before the coming lecture, that is going to be a huge difference. And please, I'm telling you, try to get the highest score now because this is the beginning is simple. What is coming is more elaborate. And this elaboration is based on the previous lecture. So if you miss one lecture, you're missing really two lectures or more. So please try to be on time all the time in class. Marie, Marcel, anything else? Um, no, I think we're doing good. Um, a lot of this is kind of review for me. So it's, um, it's good to refresh it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Marcel. Aaron, Erin, so tell me, what is your, your input? Oh, there is no input. Some input? Uh, <clears throat> pretty much what everyone said. I mean, the presentation was like very thoroughly through, you know, um, it was able, I was able to like access uh, your lectures before too. And I think I found that very helpful. So yeah, very good. Very good. So please let's do that. Okay. So just uh, review before the lecture, you will see that you have so much benefit on that. Thank you. Erin. Thank you so much. Hey, Miss Nant, your opinion, please. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, your explanation is very good. Uh, but the things I want to do is I want to have more practice, like um, like more homework, so that we are you know quite uh pretty much uh prepared to for the quiz and the exam too. Wait, 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 wait. But you you said you want. I, to I would like to have homework? more homework. I, can, homework. I yeah. can give you more homework to everybody. So she she wants more homework, huh? You want more homework? I will give you. Yeah. More homework. But, <laughs> so yeah, because uh, you, the, you, I, you, I believe you, that the more more you, homework you, can uh, more homework can prepare um, for the quiz and the exam. Okay, so I see some smiles around. So everybody, everybody like the idea? Raise your hand. Nat, I see. I'll say more reviews. You are, you are alone now to this time. I will tell you, Miss Nant. Okay, thank you, yes. for the, thank you for the input. Yeah, I'm going to put actually triple more exercises for you, for everybody. No, no, no. I'm not going to do that. You have this course is prepared to give you the amount of exercises that you require to success in the course. What I'm going to do, as Erin was saying, are going to do reviews. Are going to do um, uh, I mean sessions. We are going to do tutoring. Those tutorings are going to be voluntary and not mandatory. But one more thing, I tell you ahead of time before you get uh, you you're going to tell. I do not record reviews. I do not record tutoring on Super Sundays or Super Tuesdays. Why? It's a reason. The reason is that I want to do these tutorials because I want to personalize the needs of the students. So you're coming because you need something. You are coming not because I'm going to give you the answers of the question. That will never happen for me. I'm not asking you, I'm not thinking that you're asking for that. You are not, I'm sure. But in the past, some students are thinking I'm giving the answer, I'm not. I'm not. So you need to review, study, complete your exercises that you have in your in your homework. That will be enough. The good thing here is that you can contact me anytime. The good thing is that you can contact me anytime. Anytime. So you have my, my number and you can text me. And whatever questions about the topic, just let me know right away. And I will answer the fastest way to communicate with me is about is with text message. You okay with that? Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, doctor. But but not don't text me after 12, okay? Night, because I'm sleeping. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. All right. Um Miss uh, Shani, Shani, so please tell me anything to need to be improved or something that you 
want to change or what, what is your opinion about that lecture? Um, I feel like you explain everything thoroughly. I just, myself, I have to take the time to um, read over the lecture um, beforehand. I mean, I started reading it um, this past weekend, but I didn't get to finish. Um, and just more so me getting used to the online school um, training. I'm not used to that at all. So it's kind of a little hard for me to focus 100%. So I just, I have to work on that with myself. Okay. But yeah, I, I, I understand that. And you know what? Thank you for sharing that because that is telling me a lot. Uh, you are very honest and you want to learn. That is what you, you are here. And that, that is very good. So whatever question or need you have from now on, yes, you can call me or you can text me like uh, the, the rest. So I will be always trying to do my extra mile for you guys. So uh, what is coming next is, uh, let's see, uh, some of you, you will tell me, if you want a tutorial before Monday, I can do it. But if not, I want to explore how you're doing yourself and uh, and to review. And if you have if you have some uh, suggestions, I can provide some time on Sunday. But it should be about five o'clock in the morning, six or seven, because I I, I sleep only four hours, four or five hours, always I've been like this. Okay, so um, and be okay with that. So you will tell me. So by the way, I want everybody to share a cell phones if you want. This is is voluntary. So everybody have a a, a chat a cell chat or that you can share uh, information, latest news on the on the course. It's up to you guys. I'm not going to force you, but definitely other groups are always doing that. So. All right. So if there is any other question, please let me know. You can write down your cell phones if somebody wants to share in order to uh, contact each other. And that will be a good idea. OK. All right. So OK, Mr. and Miss Group 69, welcome again to Guernica Academy. We are going to have many, many many battles in in the future about knowledge and how to memorize everything and to connect and this is your beginning your first step and welcome again muchas gracias i have a quick question yes yeah go ahead the um the practice questions that are in the um that are in the lecture do you want us to answer those and submit them as well no 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 those are practice questions on the Just power for us. is for us okay. or, not for us for me for you Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank you. And remember, there is an animation. So before you you click, and the animation is jumping the right hands. So you can practice and practice and practice. Okay. All right. So the the homework have components of the lecture and math. So that's why I did math at the at the end. There are some math components there in the homework. There is two parts. Okay. Uh, I'm going to correct the homeworks and definitely, yeah, so I need to go, Gernick is calling me, okay? Thank you so much for every everybody, and you know, just contact me anytime, okay? Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Just a bye. Hello, bye-bye, bye. I go, okay, so everybody left. Who is it?